You can download a printable version of this guide from the Enchanted Media website where you'll find even more film, video and animation resources. Read the description for more information. A Beginner's Guide to Camera Shots and Angles For video makers, film directors and animators, using the correct conventional camera terminology is key to giving the impression that you know what you're doing. One of the basics is learning how to describe the framing of your subject matter to other people. This is where you'll want to brush up on the language, or grammar, of camera shots. As well as giving your storyboard that professional touch, selecting the right camera angle and shot size for each of your scenes is crucial for creating cohesive and engaging sequences. For video pre-production storyboards you'll want to be using standard shot descriptions, or shot types. Camera shot types are an established set of terms and abbreviations when framing your subjects in camera. They are the common aspects of picture composition, and will help your video production by establishing spatial and emotional relationships between the on-screen subjects and the viewer, and as conventional terminology between production crew members. When creating storyboard sequences, it's essential to know what framing type and angle might be best suited for each particular frame. Camera framing styles and camera angles are not mutually exclusive. Indeed they are meant to work together. In your shot description, you may wish to shoot your subject close up, from a high angle, for instance. We've broken down camera shot types into three areas, framing terms, shot size, camera angle types, and other common camera shots. These camera terms focus on framing, or cropping, your scene, the shot size, where to cut off your subject, and how far back you'll need to place the camera, or how much zoom you'll need. We'll discuss what situations you'll want to be right up close, and why you might want to choose to surround your subject with more space. An extreme close-up fills the entire frame with your subject's features, getting right up close to the eyes, lips or fingers, for instance. It might also be the leaves on a tree or the headlight of a car. We're able to observe the smallest of details. When shooting people this close we are examining their subtle movements and expressions with a microscope. Extreme close-ups offer an extreme intimacy with the subject, rarely observed in everyday life. Can also be used to present a mysterious, abstract view of an object, good for opening titles. In a close-up, the frame is filled with a large part of your subject, such as an entire head. Very little background is seen. Often used when a person is displaying restrained, facial emotions, such as growing anger or sadness. Practically, the close-up is easier to light than a wider shot, and backgrounds are less of a worry, though you may lose the sense of location if used too much. Often used in conjunction with medium shots. In a medium close-up, the frame is largely taken up by the subject. A head and shoulders shot, essentially. This shot would prop a person off just under the shoulders, and would be the typical of framing you'd see in a family portrait. Environmental foreground and background elements help give the subject a sense of location, though it can be unclear exactly where the subject is. A medium close-up is perfect for shooting a single person, with a lot of spoken dialogue. The subject doesn't overwhelm the screen. The space around the subject allows them to interact with props that are in easy reach. A very common shot, and likely one you'll use most often, is the medium shot, or mid shot. People are cropped at the waist, and there's enough room in the frame for two or more subjects, without it feeling cramped. There's also enough room in the background for the viewer to appreciate the scene's location, and time of day. Switch on the TV and you'll see a lot of this type of shot, as it's used for presenting, and interviews. Great for dialogue scenes between multiple subjects. Still close enough to see facial expressions, though this is as wide as you want to be for this. It's also useful for capturing body language, often used in conjunction with close-up shots. When shooting people, a wide shot, or full shot, can contain the entire body of a standing person, head to toe. There's plenty of background space and other scene elements. With wider shots, the environment begins to play a more important role in the scene specifically the relationship between the subject and their surroundings. 
subjects can move around more freely in a wide shot, so interaction with other scene elements, and with each other, can be more significant. The long shot, or establishing shot, mostly incorporates the wider location, with the subject reduced to a much smaller on-screen element, essentially creating a picture of the environment and our subject's place within it. The long shot is often used at the start of a scene, to provide the viewer with information about the settings, such as location, time of day and atmosphere. If your scene is dramatically different from the previous scene then it's common to use a new establishing shot. It's also an obvious shot style for large groups of people, or where a lot of action or movement is taking place. As a photographer does, now you have more elements in shot, you can more easily apply composition principles to your scenes. Atmosphere is key to the extreme long shot, often without any of our main subjects. Typically, in cinema, these show us sprawling city landscapes and beautiful vistas. There can be many elements in the shot, such as buildings or trees, or the landscape can be devoid of objects, such as a shot of outer space, or one of endless sand dunes. Extreme long shots often attempt to show us where we are in the world. Your primary aim, with the extreme long shot, is to add atmosphere to the sequence by utilizing peripheral elements. These are the basic camera angle types. We are not focusing on the camera movement in this video but simply how the direction of the camera can influence a shot's mood. We'll also look at how the camera angle can affect the viewer's perception of the on-screen subject matter. With an over-the-shoulder shot, the camera is placed high up behind one of the subject's shoulders, so their face is unseen but we can see the back of the head, and usually the shoulders. Can be used with or without other visible people in the shot. When used with a solitary subject, we are viewing the scene from their perspective, which makes it a great technique for witnessing something, perhaps with for the first time, together with the subject. When used with multiple subjects it's good for reaction shots, such as a conversation, as it allows the viewer to feel closer to the interaction. With a point of view shot the camera is looking at a scene through the subject's line of sight, as if through their eyes. Point of view gives us the illusion that we've stepped inside the body of a subject, and are seeing the world through their eyes. There's an emotional attachment we get with this technique, as we no longer have the peripheral vision of the scene. This can be claustrophobic, so it's a perfect technique for anxiety and horror themes. We'll also see the POV when looking through spy glasses or binoculars, or when the subject's vision is obscured somehow, such as when they're intoxicated or falling asleep. The low angle shot has the camera close to the floor, looking up at the subject, and making it look abnormally big. Sometimes called a worm's eye shot. Shooting from a low angle can make the subject look powerful and overbearing, often emphasizing menace if your subject is the antagonist. If your subject is the good guy, this angle can give them hero, protector status. A high angle shot has the camera higher than the subject, looking down at it making the subject look small. This can have the camera just above head height, or several feet higher. A high angle shot makes the subject look and feel vulnerable, and inferior to the viewer. This is perfect to visually represent feelings of fear, or the attempt to plead with a stronger adversary. Aerial shots are extremely high perspectives, taken from tall buildings, trees, Cranes or drones with a camera pointed towards a subject on the ground. Usually taken with a wide lens, so we can still see the horizon. A great shot for capturing the wider environment of a scene, without being obscured by elements on the ground. Perfect for shooting a couple dancing in the center of a room full of other people or, conversely, a single, isolated subject lost within a vast desert. The bird's eye view or top shot, is a high, aerial shot looking directly down on top of the scene, with no visible horizon. Typically, the camera is angled perpendicular to the ground. This used to involve an expensive helicopter shoot, but the recent profusion of affordable camera drone technology has made aerial techniques much more accessible to the video enthusiast. Can often create an abstract view of the world, making cities seem like giant complex mazes, 
and mountain ranges look like alien landscapes. These unusual points of view offer feelings of spirituality, and are often used as cinematic openers, containing title credits. In a Dutch angle shot the camera is tilted, or canted, to the side slightly so that the horizon is at an obtuse angle. As opposed to still photography, where an off-kilter angle often looks very stylish, tilting the film camera produces a nauseating effect, giving the viewer a sense of disorientation. It's often used when the subject is in an unusual state of mind, unsettling our normal visual expectations, adding tension, and anxiety. There are many other shot types, but we'll finish up with a few of the more popular camera terms commonly used in television and film. A cutaway is a shot, usually without camera motion, of something away from the main subject, but often, directly or indirectly, related to the events of the current scene. Cutaways can be used to show something the subject is secretly thinking of, perhaps a past event or a hidden gun. A quick way of providing external information to the viewer whilst minimizing interruption to the flow of the scene. They can also be used in the editing process, to fix bad joins between cuts of the same sequence, or hiding on-camera mistakes, by briefly switching to a separate image. Cutaways can successfully break temporal space, by showing things that have happened before the main scene, or even brief glimpses of events that have yet to take place. Cut-ins, or insert shots, are different camera angles or framings of the same scene, interjected into a sequence, to draw attention to a particular aspect of the subject. They're usually depictions of events happening at the exact same moment in time as the main scene, from a different perspective. If you're capturing a medium shot of a suspected criminal being interrogated, you may want to briefly show the viewer a close-up of their nervous fingers, underneath the table. Or, you may wish to focus briefly on a ring being placed on someone's finger at a wedding ceremony. As with cutaways, cut-ins can also be helpful in the edit room to cover up any flaws in your footage. Reaction shots, or noddies, show the facial expressions of a person off-screen, reacting to something which has happened, or has been said, in the previous shot. You might use a reaction shot to visually emphasize what the viewer should be thinking about a certain event. Perhaps we've just seen a man fall off a ladder, or a woman has just announced her engagement. Reaction shots can help nudge the viewer to laugh or cry. Used in television interviews, noddies are silent clips used to break up the monotony of lengthy interviewee dialogue, by allowing the viewer to see the interviewer's reactions. Shot during interview breaks, whilst camera and lighting are set up. They are cut into the sequence at the edit stage. Usually, noddies are simply shots of the interviewer nodding their head. The master shot is a full, unedited version of an entire scene, filmed using a single camera, usually with all scene members in frame at all times. This is the kind of visual aspect we'd expect when going to see a live stage production, though master shots can also involve a moving camera, if the screen is well choreographed. The lack of cuts in a master shot helps the viewer stay engaged with the scene, though, in reality, a master shot is used for the base sequence, and then interspersed with close-ups and mid-shots. Long-take scenes are now rare in cinema and, therefore, capture our attention when performed successfully. You can download a printable version of this guide from the Enchanted Media website where you'll find even more film, video and animation resources. Read the description for more information.